After watching this video lecture st series, students will be able to calculate pH, pOH, the concentration of H3O+, and hydroxide ions of both strong acids and strong bases. They'll be able to use the correct significant figure procedures for logarithmic functions, um, and they'll be able to determine the species present in strong acid and base disassociations um, and their subsequent relationship to equilibrium. So before we go ahead and get started, let's go ahead and let's look at the significant figure rules. Um, so basically for uh, logarithmic approaches or, or problems, the number of decimal places in the pH value are going to equal the number of sig figs in the concentration value. So if I have a pH uh, equal to 2.52, there are two decimal places in this pH value. So when I calculate my H3O plus concentration, I'm going to have two sig figs in the answer. Um, for concentration. And this would apply to pOH and OH minus as well. So let's go ahead and look at how we calculate pH um, and pOH. So pH is going to be equal to the negative log of our hydronium ion concentration, while pOH is equal to the negative log of our, hydrox our hydroxide ion concentration. Uh, so this relationship, these two relationships are things you want to uh, memorize. Now, some of you may be asking, how do I get to just hydroxide or, or hydronium ion by itself? Um, and in those situations, what you're going to do um, is in order to get your hydronium ion by itself, you're going to take 10 to the negative pH um, value, and that will give you your hydronium ion by itself. Um, and in that same uh, thought process, if you wanted to get your hydroxide ion uh, concentration, you're going to do 10 to the negative pOH. So these four uh, equations that we just looked at, these are um, all interrelated. You want to make sure that you're able to um, calculate each of them and you know them by heart. Um, additionally, this equation here allows us to interconvert between pH and pOH in a very um, simple way. So if I'm given pH, uh, I can solve for pOH based on this relationship here and vice versa. So um, all five of these equations, guys, you want to make sure you know them, that you understand them, and that you're comfortable with them. Now, let's go ahead and let's talk about the pH scale. Okay, so the pH scale, guys, you've seen before, but um, basically pH of 7 is neutral. Um, so pure water would be an example of something that would have a pH of 7. If I am below 7 on the pH scale, I'm going to be acidic. If I'm above 7 on the pH scale, of course, I'm going to be basic. Okay, so uh, basically just make sure that you guys are familiar with uh, the scales. Um, being able to identify acids and bases, as well as calculate the concentrations or pH and pOH of each of the um, substances being analyzed. So let's go ahead and apply some of these. So they've provided us with the H3O plus concentration of a specific solution, um, and they want us to calculate pH and pOH of said solution. So since they gave us uh, the hydronium ion concentration, we know initially we can very easily calculate um, our pH by taking the negative log of the hydronium ion. Okay, so pH is going to be equal to the negative log of 3.5 times 10 to the negative third. Okay, and if we go ahead and plug this into our calculators, this will go ahead and give us 2.45 as our pH. Um, now notice I've taken the uh, two uh, sig figs from the concentration, and that's how many decimal places I will have in my pH value. So now that we've calculated our pH, we can go ahead and use this equation to solve for our pOH. Okay, so what's going to end up happening is pOH is going to be equal to 14 minus 2.45, and that is going to give us 11.55 as our pOH. Um, and so we have our pH and our pOH as they have asked us to solve for. Okay, so this next problem, again, they've given us the hydronium ion concentration, and they've asked us for our hydroxide ion and our uh, pOH concentration. So guys, there are multiple ways you could approach this problem. Um, you could obviously uh, solve for pH and then move into pOH uh, and solve for OH minus. Uh, that's one approach. You could also use um, this equation, if you guys remember this from last lecture. Um, Use this equation, um, solve for your OH minus, and then move into pOH. Okay, those are both options. So I'm going to pick the first option. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that into pH, the pH equation, and get um, the following pH. I'm then going to get my pOH by taking 14 minus my pH. 
Okay, um, and that's going to give me the following um, POH. Okay, and I'm going to utilize the anti-log to calculate uh, my hydroxide ion concentration. So OH minus is going to be equal to um, 10 to the negative 11.36, which is my POH, and that's going to give me 4.4 times 10 to the negative 12 molar in terms of my concentration of my hydroxide ion. So again, guys, there's multiple approaches to these uh, problems. Um, make sure, though, that you're comfortable with whatever method that you're using uh, and that you're able to show your work. So let's go ahead and let's look at some of these problems um, and apply some of the concepts that we've learned today uh, to our understanding of what's physically happening with the uh, disassociation process for strong acids and strong bases. Okay, so this right here, guys, is an acid. It's a strong acid. It is known as nitric acid. And we know that strong acids are going to ionize 100%. So basically, they're going to break up into um, the following pieces. A H plus ion, okay, or a proton, however you want to look at that, um, and their nitrate ions. Okay, so in this context, guys, because we know that this is a strong acid, one of the ones we need to memorize. We know that the concentration of our H plus ion and our concentration of our nitrate are going to be equal. Why? Because of this 100% ionization. We only have these in uh, solution. We don't really have any of the nitrate or nitric acid. Okay, so with that thought in, in mind, we know that if we know our HNO3 concentration, we know that's going to be equal to H plus. Okay, so this is going to really simplify the relationship between H plus and our acid. Okay, and so this is true only for strong acids. Now, if I know the concentration of my strong acid, I therefore know the concentration of H plus. So my concentration of my acid is 0 0.1 molar. Okay, so the concentration of my H plus, or another way to look at this would be based on my hydronium ion. Remember, they mean the same thing. Um, are, is going to be 0 0.10 molar. Okay, so if I know the concentration of my hydronium ion, I can easily calculate my pH by taking the negative log of that value. Okay, so if I go ahead and do this math, I'm going to end up with a pH of 1.00. Okay, so very acidic um, based on the pH scale. Okay, so um, this is the way we treat strong acids. Okay, this 100% ionization idea allows us to take uh, this consideration and simplify um, any equilibrium thought processes. Okay, so NaOH, sodium hydroxide, it's a group 1A metal with a hydroxide ion, so we know that this is a strong base. Okay, it is also going to ionize completely into its pieces. Okay, um, and so we know that if we know the concentration of our strong base, okay, we also will know the concentration of our hydroxide ion. Okay, so this is very, very simple here. Um, something else I guess I should maybe point out, guys, is that we should be indicating that these uh, species are aqueous um, because obviously they are dissolving in water. Water is present here. Okay, so forgive me for that oversight. But back to what I was saying. So in this case, uh, we have a strong base, and this relationship will hold true for all strong bases. Okay, so in this case, they've asked us to calculate the pH of a strong base. Now, um, I can infer, or I can glean that I know the concentration of my hydroxide based on the relationship we just discussed. However, the concentration of the hydroxide is not what we use to plug into our pH equation. So we're going to have to do two steps for this problem. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we are going to calculate the pOH using our hydroxide ion concentration. Okay, so if we take the negative log of uh, 0 0.028. Okay, that is going to give us our pOH of this particular solution, which is going to be 1.55. Okay, and then they don't want pOH, they want pH. So if we're going to solve for pH, we're going to take 14 minus our 1.55, and that is going to be 12.45 as our pH of the solution, which is basic and is what we would anticipate when we put something that releases hydroxide ions into solution. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's look at this next problem. Okay, so if we look at this, we have calcium hydroxide, which is a dibasic uh, base. Um, so we're going to end up with calcium hydroxide, excuse me, calcium ions and hydroxide ions in solution when we place this into water. 
Okay, now notice there are two equivalents of hydroxide ion for every one equivalent of our calcium hydroxide. So we have to take that into account because the concentration of hydroxide ion itself is going to be twice what the concentration of the uh, base is going to be. Okay, so in this context, what we need to do is take our um, molarity of our calcium hydroxide. Okay, and basically we're going to kind of do a little bit of stoic, okay? Um, so we have two equivalents of hydroxide ion for every one equivalent of calcium hydroxide. Okay. And that's going to give us the following concentration of our hydroxide ion. Okay, so now that we have that, we can calculate our pOH. So our pOH is going to be equal to the negative log of um, our concentration of our hydroxide ion concentration. Um, and that's going to give us... Um, 2.66 uh, as our PA, POH, excuse me, so our pH is going to equal 14 minus 2.66, and that's going to give us a pH of 11.34, okay, which is quite basic, um, and what we would expect for our calcium hydroxide uh, in solution. So for these problems, guys, you can't just ignore um, the number of species that are putting being put into solution it's important for you to be able to visualize and analyze what's actually being placed in solution for each of these examples um, this will be important for future acid and base problems um, but it's very important in this context so that you get the right concentrations of your hydroxides